Greetings adventurers and welcome back to Adventure Game Show Geek. What was that? Who the hell are you? <laughs> oh, Twilso, you should know me very well indeed. You're me, aren't you? Why do you have to ruin it? What are you doing here? You know the rules and interrupt me while I'm filming. I know, I know. I just came here to give you these. You need them for the video. Until next time. It's only a game, isn't it? I haven't caught there yet. But I have. See ya! And shut the door on your way out. Sorry about that. Anyway, if I hadn't already given it away today, today's video is about time travel and how it features in game shows. I know a fair bit about time travel. I like watching Doctor Who. Several of my classmates actually think I'm a time traveler. I can't think why. And I should be able to give a fairly accurate commentary. Time travel features in a few ways. One of the most key, and in my opinion, most effective uses is to bring people from our time to the future or the past to fix a problem. I say our time, I mean the time of broadcast, obviously. Mission 2110 has kids from 2010 come 100 years into the future to help bring down the roboids because pretty much all of humanity is dead and they're their last hope. If you've seen that film, The Tomorrow War, it's a lot like that, but with kids and robots instead of adults and aliens. Moving on, Caleb repairs a time portal that conveniently seems to exist already. And I have a problem with that. Not the fact it already exists, but just the fact the time machine itself. For one, it's ambiguous to what it actually is. The lever and the place the kids actually appear are in Caleb's lair but the opening credits feature it in an entirely different place and it's an entirely different form of time machine. It looks like an actual portal for one. The third and fourth place recruits are once again sent back home through the actual portal and Caleb's there. And the ultimate recruit is, well, the ultimate recruit appears to be vaporized. So much for a safe passage home, I mean, Either there are some serious continuity issues, or the prize for winning is the same for prize as the prize for losing, and it's probably death. Or both. <laughs> also, what stops the winning recruit from trying to prevent this future when they get back in the past? Like, I don't know, assassinating Laura Gant, or getting a job at Future Gate and making sure none of the Roboids rebel. One of those is more extreme than the other. However, in both either any scenario, that would be a bad idea. Trying to change the future could result in one in which the roboids still take over, but Caleb and the recruits fail to stop them. Or Caleb isn't even there in the first place. It's better a Pyrrhic victory than a defeat, even if it feels otherwise. Moving on to something a little bit lighter now with Time Busters. A bunch of 90s kids are recruited by a 22nd century organisation called the Time Busters to help preserve the past, while a 22nd century cult is trying to destroy it. Their time machine is in the form of a bus. Kind of like a Doc 2 episode, The Planet of the Dead. Some kids are sent onto the field, some monitor from the bus, and they have to solve whatever the problem is, get the time capsule, and escape. And let me stop here. This is a picture or a time capsule. Ignore the really bad print quality. Also known as energy capsules, the time vandals like to use them to travel through time zones. And this is a bio rod, or multiple bio rods. The energy source of 2110, which just happens to be in the 22nd century. Bio rods and time capsules, 22nd century and the 22nd century. I don't know about you, but I smell a conspiracy. Just look at them. The designs are so similar, they have to be connected somehow. It can't not be intentional, it can't be. Anyway, back to Time Busters. The Time Vandals are trying to mess with the past to mess up the future. I assume they want to create some sort of paradox. Their leader is called Dr. Paradox, after all. However, their efforts might very well be futile. If they're using a closed-loop method of time travel, then the actions of the past are compensated in the future, meaning that anything they try to do will already be done. And judging by the fact that the time busters just seem to fix it then go, then a closed loop might just be possible. More likely they were going for an open loop, 
And that means that time paradoxes are definitely possible. And then there's the adventure game in which celebrities and civilians just seem to be time traveling for fun. And yes, it is time traveling. Arg is described as a planet many light years away on the far side of the galaxy in a region often visited by time travelers. And even without time travel, if they wanted to visit, they would have to travel at light speed. And it is believed that the only way to travel at light speed means traveling it through time as well. Anyway, time machines are powered by time crystals. And they're required for them to get home. Of course, the fact the Argons keep stealing them for entertainment doesn't help. A slight ambiguity comes in from Nightmare. The contestants are kids from our world, our time. You're invited to phase across time with them. And it certainly isn't modern Britain as it was then or now. But what time is it anyway? It appears to be the 12th century, but there are elements of many different time periods. There are pineapples and Roman baths and Arthurian legend and even robots of all things. It seems more like every time is happening at once. It's cool, but it's weird, and it's slightly more dimension-y than typical time travel. But still, I consider it time travel. Broadsword doesn't let up. Shows like Virtually Impossible and The Satellite Game seem to be set in ambiguous features. But the contestants all seem to be from the time it's set, so I wouldn't quite consider it time travel. And the same can be said for Jedi Temple Challenge, where the setting and the contestants are from a long time ago and a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> the real question here is, where do we get the tapes from? Then there are shows that have the contestants cross multiple time periods within the show itself. The Crystal Maze takes you from the future in the not-so-distant times of 2057, apparently, to medieval England, to Aztec times. In Red Lake Gardens of the Museum, each individual challenge is a blast into the past, using a magic torch as a time machine. I'd also like to bring up a more recent and more quiz-based game show, Horrible History's Gory Games, as it does much of the same thing. You could say that Relic walks so it could run. And there we have it. Time travel through the lens of game shows. I had a lot of fun writing this, and I hope I can bring up this topic again in the future. Now, I've got to go. You could say I've got unfinished business. See you earlier.